Hi, I'm Arden Kaywin, and this is the Pro Singer Success Collective. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about an exercise for big singing results in 2023. Stay tuned. So as we come to the end of the year, I mean, we're coming into the last few weeks of 2022 and I feel reflective. You know, it's like you've got this one life, this one precious life and only so much time on this planet. And it's like at this time, as we come to the end of the year, I start to think, well, how, how are we spending it? How are we spending our precious time? And this is a question that I revisit every time I get to this point in the year and I do a year in review. So I want you to know that when it comes to the stuff that I bring to you, the stuff that I bring to my students in, in my intensive who work in my studio with me, I am always walking the walk with you guys. I am not directing you to do anything that I am not already doing. And so one of the most powerful tools for me has been a year in review. And it's really important because it's it's so essential to be able to look back and celebrate your wins and acknowledge your growth and extract all the juice and the lessons so that you can set the right targets for your singing and your career in the upcoming year. But, you know, as we move forward, I don't know about you, you know, these last few years, they've been doozies. I mean, 2020, 2021, COVID years, you know, so this, this last year, 2022 is for me started to finally feel like we're, we're coming out of COVID time. And, and now we're coming into new challenges, economic challenges, other things, hard things, you know, things in the last several years that my 2010 brain would have like blown her stack over if, if, if she knew had happened. Right. And so there's a quote that I like that I want to share with you, which is that people can overestimate what can be done in a month and underestimate what can be done in a year. So today you'll discover just how true this statement really is. So in honor of 2022 being coming to a close and bringing some new energy and new intention to the year ahead in 2023, I am sharing with you this special year in review exercise. So this is something that I have put together from others that I value in terms of how they walk through their lives and their careers. Um, this is sort of a compilation um, from Marie Forleo, from uh, Jane Jewell and Lisa Tosti, some other amazing mindset coaches and business people who I respect. Um, and so it's a three-part exercise that uses the untapped wisdom that you have gained over the last year to make the next year the best ever. And so I, you know, when we're talking about how we want to move through our singing in our career, and, you know, we have to be really intentional about, uh, intentional about the targets that we're setting, the goals that we're setting, because when we're talking about the things we want to create and experience and achieve and have, someday is not a date on the calendar. So if we're not very intentional about how we're walking into the next month, year of our life, then before we know it, it could be two years, five years, 10 years, and we're still on the bench with whatever it is that we want to create. So these exercise, this three-part exercise, I've tweaked a little bit so you can really focus on those things related to your singing and your career and your artistic journey. But you can really do this about anything in your life. So each section is pretty short, pretty easy to execute. You can complete them all in one sitting, or you could take your time, do a piece each day. Um, but think of these exercises as like a yearly planning tool for your singing, for your career. So you have a really a much better shot at manifesting and creating the things that you want. So you've got a whole year full of possibilities for your singing and your career ahead of you. And so this year in review will help you to make the most of it. So let's dive in. Grab a journal, grab a pen, and follow the prompts and you can pause this as you go um, and you can write on it or you can just listen and write 
all the prompts and then come back and write on it uh, on your own time. Okay, so section one of the year in review is what you're proud of. So those who work with me in my programs and who have done uh, workshops and retreats and things with me know that I am huge on celebrating your wins. Because if you don't celebrate your wins, then how are you going to know what's working, what you need to continue to do, if you're going to want to get where you want to go? So in section one, we're going to really dig in to what you're proud of. So here are some questions to help you log that. So over the past year, what have you done that you're proud of in your singing life? What have you done that you're proud of in your singing, your artistic, your creative life? What are the obstacles that you've overcome in this year on your singing journey? Maybe obstacles in technique, maybe obstacles in, uh, in, in performing, getting learning something new that was hard for you, doing something differently that, that you were beyond your comfort zone to do. What obstacles have you overcome this year? What are some of the results that you've created in your singing and your career in 2022? Like even if this year was difficult or hard for you, see what you can come up with. Think about any performances, auditions, recordings, opportunities that you've created or, or taken advantage of, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, and, and what I said a second ago about even if this year has been hard for you, it's even more important that you extract the wins, that you find the things you are proud of. So pull out old calendars, old journals, old planners, old emails, whatever to jog your memory. And it could take time, but it's really worth it to be able to log the wins and celebrate what you're proud of from this last year in 2022. So the next question, the next section we're gonna go into is what was most important and why? So once you're done, you can go back over that list that you just wrote of all the celebrations, all the things that, that you've overcome, all of the results you've created, all the celebrations, and go back over that list and answer these questions. Out of everything that you listed, what was the most important? And circle what jumps out to you. All those wins, those obstacles you overcame, what was the most important? And then why? Why was it the most important? Because when you know the things that have made the biggest impact, the biggest difference in your singing and your artistic career that you're building, then you'll be able to make wiser decisions as you plan the next year, because you'll know what was the most impactful, the most efficient, the most important, and you can move more in that direction. So that's the first section. Okay, so now let's go into the section, the second section, which is all about your learnings from the past year. So the first thing to identify is what are the most important things that you have learned over the past year with respect to your singing, your career, your artistic journey? Maybe things that are of a technical nature, maybe things that you've learned about yourself. What are your most important things that you have learned? And then ask yourself, what wisdom has become crystal clear to you? What wisdom have I gained? What new awareness have I come to that has made a big difference to me? And then lastly, what mistakes did you make and what did you learn from them? In my book, there's really no such thing as a mistake. It's just an opportunity to up-level because our mistakes are showing us the gaps and the things that need to be tweaked if we're going to get to the next level. So maybe I would phrase this a little differently. Instead of what mistakes did you make that you learned from, I would say, what were the opportunities that I learned from for things that I could optimize? So you can phrase it either way. And so think it through, write all of them down, big and small. And then in the same way that you circled your most important celebrations and learnings, same thing here. Look at the list that you just created and answer these questions. What lessons were the biggest game changers for me? What mistakes were the biggest game changers for me? Maybe even failures. And why do these matter to you? 
these lessons, these things you learned that were the game changers? Why are these so important? Why do they matter? And then from that, ask yourself, what do you really want to remember as you move into this brand new year of 2023? And so this section is really crucial in logging the learnings. So review it, come back to it so that you can avoid making the same mistakes again in 2023. Okay. So this is all the first section, which is all about logging wins, logging distinctions, learnings, so that now we can go into part two of the year in review, the year in review which is all about releasing the past. So part two is about letting go of things that can drag you down so that you can plan the next year with clear and purposeful mind and action. So trust me, you're gonna feel so much lighter and freer when you get done with this. So get out your journal and follow the prompts as I give them to you. So here's the section, what are you willing to let go of? This is so important, okay? So you're gonna create a couple, uh, like three separate lists under this section that you're gonna create. And, and this is gonna take some time, but it's really worth it, guys. And it's really essential because if we continue to drag our yesterday into our today, then our tomorrow is gonna look exactly like our yesterday. You get that? Okay, so we have to understand what we're willing to let go of so that our tomorrow doesn't look exactly like our yesterday. So first of all, let's just get some clarity on old projects, old goals. So are there any old projects that you keep meaning to do but haven't made time for? List them out, write them down. What have you been meaning to do but you just like you just never get to it? Or it could you could look at it like this. Do you have any I should do this type of goals that you keep putting off? I should go get new headshots. I really should um, put together my demo reel, my singing demo reel. I really should put together my artist website. Um, I should audition for the Met competition if you're an opera singer and the years are going by and you realize that you're going to age out of it if you don't do it. Things like that. Are there any I should do's <laughs> types of goals that you keep putting off? Are there any expectations from family or loved ones or even yourself that you've noticed now aren't true to your heart anymore. Expectations that you may have held, expectations that others hold of you, may have held of you, that just aren't true for you, aren't in your heart anymore. Write those down as well. And so if you can think about our goals and our, our old projects, they're, they're kind of like these old leftovers that are still in your fridge, you know, food that you meant to eat, but it's not really good anymore. It's just taking up valuable space. And so this list is an opportunity for you to clean out your mental fridge so that you can, you know, have lots of space for energy and opportunities and ideas so that you can go rock 2023 without all these moldy shoulds cluttering up your, your mind and your heart, okay? So after we've done that, we're going to look at upsets, angers, resentments. So here's the first here's the first prompt for this section. Are there any resentments or upsets that you've been hanging on to with respect to your singing, your career, your opportunities, where you're at, where you want to be? Any resentments or upsets that you find yourself continuing to hold on to? Do you have old emotional baggage that you are ready to release, old stories that don't serve you anymore, old limiting beliefs, old traumas that you hang on to because you're just used to it, it's habit that just don't serve your talent, your dreams, where you wanna go and the life that you wanna have from your gifts. Write them down. And then is there anybody that you need to forgive him? including yourself. Don't leave yourself off this list. Is there anyone you've been needing to forgive? So be honest, write this all down. Even if you don't know how to forgive or let go in the moment, as long as you're willing, you'll figure out a way. 
So naming it and acknowledging it is the first step towards this clearing, call it healing, call it a new awareness that's going to take you much more powerfully into the year ahead because you're not lugging and holding onto all this old baggage that's weighing you down. So now we're going to dig into a little more of these limiting beliefs and crappy old stories that tend to weigh us down. So here's another prompt. What limiting beliefs have you been carrying for the past year when it comes to your singing, your career, and your artistic journey? What limiting beliefs have you been carrying for the last year around how you sing, what you sing, the way you sing, the opportunities that you go for or don't go for, the, the trajectory of your career or lack thereof, where you are in your artistic journey? What limiting beliefs are you holding on to? So it could be something like, this is a simple one. High notes are hard. That is a limiting belief. Because if you believe high notes are hard, then what are you going to do when a high note comes? You're going to try to push for it. And that's going to sabotage your body's ability to log the technique that you know is actually going to get you there because you're now pushing and you're no longer in the technique that serves those high notes. So now you've created the hard high note. So it could be something as simple as that. It could be, I'm too old. That's a big one. It could be, it's impossible to make a sustainable living as a singer. If you're trying to be a professional singer, but you have that belief, oh, Lordy, that is going to sabotage you. So look at your beliefs. Ask yourself what limiting beliefs you've been holding around your career, your journey, your voice, your technique. Now, let's take it a step further and let's talk about excuses. What excuses have you been attaching to that are holding you back from singing your best and making the biggest impact with your voice at the level that you want? What excuses? I can think of the top three. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. Those are really the top two. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. There might be other excuses though. Like, you know, I have to get braces for my cat. Uh, I mean, you guys wouldn't believe the crazy excuses that I've heard as to why people do not have the life and the career and the voice that they really do want. So the longer you spend in your excuses, the longer it will be till you get your dream. Till you get to sing in a way that will bring that dream. Here's another, oh, I know the other top excuse is uh, the city I live in. I don't live in, I, you know, I, I live in whatever city and there aren't enough opportunities here. And my answer to that is, so what? <laughs> okay. Well, so what are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay in that excuse or are you going to do something about it? Maybe you move. Maybe there's this thing called the internet where there's tons of opportunities and it doesn't matter where you live, right? Like you can see how these excuses are just ridiculous when we really look at them, you know? So here's another prompt for that. What crappy old stories are you telling yourself about all of that which stuff that no longer serves you? Like you guys, we all have stories in our head that we believe, like, oh, well, we believe our own lies. Boy, are we good at believing our own lies. So what's, what lies do you keep telling yourself? What stories do you continue to believe about all this stuff, about your excuses, about your limiting beliefs that just don't serve your, your goals, your, your journey, your dream anymore? So for example, like maybe you've been telling yourself, like the example before, that you're just too old to follow this passion. And maybe you're done believing the story that, that it's all been said or done before. Like, I, what song could I possibly write that hasn't been done or, or said before? And if you have that belief, then you're not going to write a song, trust me. Or maybe <coughs> it's time to, to put the, the old crappy story to bed that, that you're not good enough, you're not capable enough, or you're not pretty enough, or you're not thin enough, or you're not whatever enough to go and learn how to sing in a way that's going to change everything for you. Or maybe, you know, it's time to get rid of that story that I don't have enough time or that I'm not uh, funny enough or brave enough or whatever it is. 
that you don't think you are enough of that's been stopping you from being the one who goes to that audition and nails it, from being the one whose record actually gets chosen for that giant Spotify playlist and blows up and now you have management calling you, you've got tour dates calling you, you know? Most of you are one performance away from the career and the life that you want, but you got all these old stories and lies you're telling yourself and excuses that are stopping you from getting there. So remember, you're so much more powerful and capable than you give yourself credit for. So this is your opportunity to let go of all of those limiting beliefs and negative thoughts and stories and excuses that have been holding you back from getting where you really want to go with your singing. So do this work now so that all of these things don't continue to control you in 2023. So you're going to ask yourself, what is the most important to let go of and why? So once you're done with looking at the limiting beliefs, looking at the excuses, all that stuff that you just wrote on, then go back over each subsection and answer these questions. What are the most important things for me to let go of? And circle them. And then ask yourself, why is it so important that I let these things go now? Why is it absolutely vital that I cut the cord from these things now? And then ask yourself, what have these goals and resentments and fears or limiting beliefs, what have they cost you over the last year? What does it cost you to believe that you're not good enough to go for X, Y, Z? What is it costing you to not sing well enough yet to go for X, Y, Z? What is it costing you to not be investing in the things that are going to help you and move the needle to get where you want to go? What is it costing you to watch all the other people that you came up doing your undergrad music degree with out there working and auditioning and celebrating on Facebook with their cast photos, you know, their arms around the shoulders and they're in costume and here you are at home coming back from your admin day job because every audition you've gone to, you didn't make a big enough impact to get it. What, is, what are those resentments costing you? So look at that. And then are there any experiences or achievements that you have missed that, that you haven't had as a result of holding on to all this stuff? Look at these things and write as much as you want. Remember, have understanding purpose. It fuels the persistence that you need to launch yourself so much more powerfully coming into 2023. So with that, we get into the third part of this, which is creating a really powerful plan for the next year, for 2023. So now that you've laid the groundwork, it's time for the fun part. The fun part which is figuring out what's next, what you want, what would light you up to get ready to fire up that imagination and tap into your heart because part three is where you're going to get to create this plan that really excites you for the next year of your singing and the next year of your career. And so you know what to do. Open up your journal again and follow the same prompts. So this is what's next. What's my future? What do I get to go create, do, have experience in the next year? in the terms of your, so we're going to look at it in terms of several different quad, quadrants. So the question is, in 2023, what do I want to create, experience, have, achieve over that, of 2023 in the following year in terms of your vocal technique, your performance, your creative artistry, your career outcomes, your financial outcomes from your music and your singing, your recordings, if that applies to you, if you're a recording artist, your auditions, if that applies to you, if you're a Broadway singer, an opera singer. So think about what you want to be achieving, creating, experiencing, feeling around all those areas, vocal technique, performances, creative artistry, career outcomes, income, 
recordings, auditions, how you want to, to feel and what you want to experience and create in all those quadrants on a more consistent basis. So think about it. Do you want to experience more consistency, more freedom, more confidence, more trust in your body, in your instrument, in your technique, in your performances? How else do you want to feel when you sing? Write it down. The goal here, guys, is to be super specific, be as specific and as concrete as possible. Like envision the best possible year of your life that you've ever had in your singing in your career. Let yourself really lean into this and dream. Don't underestimate what you can achieve. So now we're going to identify your top three most important targets or goals for the next year. So once you're done writing all that that you just did, you're going to go back over your list and you're going to answer these important questions. What are the three most important goals you want to focus on over the next 12 months and circle them now of everything you wrote about what you want to experience, have, achieve, create, in your technique and your performances and all the lists that we just did. What are the three most important goals that you want to focus on over the next 12 months and circle them? Now we got to understand the why behind that. Why are each of these goals important to you? What do they allow you to experience? What do they allow you to have? Why are these important to you? Now, here's like the most important part of this because it all comes back to identity. Who do you need to become in order to bring each of these goals into life? Who do you need to be? Notice I'm not asking you what you need to do. I'm saying, who do you need to be in order to bring these goals to life? What character traits, habits, or skills do you need to develop and own in order to accomplish these goals? Now, we've set up the beingness. We've set up how you need to show up, who you need to be, the traits and habits and skills you need to own to make this happen. And now we're talking about action steps from that place. So now ask the question, what action steps can you take to support yourself in developing these new habits, these new skills, these new traits? What actions do you need to do in order to have and develop these skills and habits? What action steps do you need to take in order to get help building the skills and the habits that you need to get where you want to go? So doing this exercise, guys, that's the last, that's the last section for the most part. Doing this exercise every year is going to help you break down all of your, your goals, your dreams, your targets, like one step at a time. And it, as I always say, if you want different results, you've got to be willing to do things differently. So allow this exercise to show you what's been working and what's not been working so that you have clarity on all those areas that need attention and need a different energy and a different strategy so that when you move forward into 2023, you're not just doing the same old things and getting the same old results. Okay? because. Like I said at the top, a year might seem like a long time, but it can also go by in a heartbeat. So if doing this exercise has brought up some, some difficult emotions because you don't feel any closer to your dreams than you did at the beginning of this past year, just bring some compassion to yourself. Like, this is why you're doing this. See it for the opportunity that it is. It's to do this year differently coming up with wisdom, with awareness, and with an intention. That's how you create powerful outcomes, powerful results, so that 2023 looks completely different by the end than 2022 did. So now that you've got the, the tactical targets and dreams written down, 
you're gonna do one final piece of this. And it's a very imaginative exercise to help you tap into your heart, your wisdom, your excitement. So I want you to imagine yourself now 10 years in the future. And I want you to start writing yourself a letter from that 10 years in the future version of you to current day you. And it can start something like this to help you to help you get into it. So if I'm writing it to me, it's 10 years from now version of me saying to current version of me, dear Arden, I'd love you to know that. And then just let your hand move and write whatever comes to your mind. Don't judge it. Don't edit it. Don't pay any attention to grammar or spelling or punctuation. It doesn't matter. Trust me, you've got so much natural knowing and wisdom within you. Let it flow. So it's dear Arden or dear your name. I'd love you to know that. And then let that wisdom flow. And if you get stuck, here are some prompts that you can experiment with. I'd love you to start doing blah, 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 blah. I'd love you to remember blah, blah, blah. I'd love you to focus on blah, 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 blah. That version of you 10 years from now who has that beautiful career and that beautiful life, who's been through all the challenges, what do they want you to know about what you need to start doing, what they'd love you to remember, what they'd love you to focus on, what they'd love you to know. So I know it's like, this might sound like a little, a little weird, but it's really powerful stuff and it helps you to access really important truths, deep truths that you know intuitively and that you'll be really glad that you articulated right now before the next year passes, the next 10 years pass. So when you've completed all the parts of this exercise, you can go back and watch this video as many times as you want, stop at the prompts, do the writing. You're gonna have a really valuable map, almost like a treasure map of, of, of wisdom, of intention, of awareness, that's gonna help you to make the next year of your singing career, of your artistry, of your life more productive, more joyful, more meaningful, and more successful. Because your time matters, guys, you know? Like, that's the one non-renewable natural resource we're all given is time. And so by doing this reflective work, you're setting yourself up to have the best year ever by maximizing your time. So keep going on and honor that wisdom within you. It is what will guide you into your best singing, into your best decision-making, into your best investments, into your best intentions, I'm telling you. So I've got this year in review exercise in a PDF and I'm gonna put it in the, the video description uh, in YouTube and I'm gonna put it in the chat in, or in the uh, post copy in Facebook. So take some me time over the next few days before the end of the year, grab, a favorite beverage, a tea, a hot chocolate, grab your journal, you know, something that makes you feel cozy and sit down, light a candle, and just examine what you've accomplished and what you want moving into 2023. And on a personal note, you know, if you, as you do this really powerful exercise, if you're realizing, because sometimes when I've done this, I've, I've had a realization, if you, if you realize that you've been accepting too many excuses over the last year. You're engaging with too many limiting beliefs or you're buying into too many fears and you can see how all of this has prevented you from blossoming and blooming into your talent and your career and your earning potential at the level that you want. Just know it's not too late to shift. It is not too late to shift. So if after looking at your patterns from the last year, you realize that your way is not working. <laughs> and that after many years of doing it, the only way that you know how, you are still not at the level that you want to be. You are still dealing with all kinds of issues and stubborn habits in your technique. You are going to auditions and you're not getting the gigs. You're making records that nobody is listening to. You are not making any money from your music. You have a side job that's killing you and sucking the life out of you. If you realize 
after so many years that your way is not working and you're ready for a proven system that will give you a new set of tools and a new foundation to build your voice and your success upon, then book a call with me. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Another year of you know, birthdays being celebrated with another year gone by at your crappy day job instead of making money singing for a living? Another year of doubt because you're releasing another EP that just like literally sat there and languished without any attention after all of the hard work and money and energy and time that you put into it. Like more crippling nerves, sabotaging auditions or performances, preventing you from singing the way you know you can. More tension and habits that are causing vocal fatigue, God forbid, vocal injury and taking you out when you should be performing every night. Right? Watching other singers you know who are less talented than you go out and get the gig and make money while you're sitting there wondering what's wrong with me as the clock is ticking. Do you want another New Year's resolution of saying like, this year is going to be different. This year, I'll finally make things happen. Because I've got news for you. And I say this because I care not to be harsh, but nothing will be different until you are. And until you decide to do things differently. So what are you waiting for? Another year of thinking about it? Another year, uh, God forbid, decade to pass while you're trying to figure it out? If you knew how to fix this stuff for yourself, you'd be doing it. right? You've been trying to figure it out this whole time and you're not getting the results that you want from your singing, from your performances, from your technique, from your career. So if that's you, then it is time to empty your cup and fill it up with a new strategy. Guys, life is way too short to waste any more time on stuff that is not working for you. Look how fast the last year went by. So reach out, book a call with me. You can click on the end screen at the end of the YouTube video to book a call. The link is right there. If you're watching on Facebook, you can find the link in the chat to book a call. We'll get on the phone for about 45 minutes to an hour, and we're going to discuss what's working and what's not working in your singing and in your career. We're going to get clarity on what you want and where you want to go, the gap between where you are and what you really want, and what's been preventing you from getting there. And if I think I can help you, I will absolutely let you know, and we can talk about what that looks like if you want our help to get there. And otherwise, if not, that's okay too. So don't waste another year or God forbid another decade. Book a call with me and let's get you moving into 2023 with a strategy and the support that works. I hope you all have an amazing holiday season, sending love, sending light, sending warmth, sending music and joy your way for an incredible end to this year and some firepower for you to launch powerfully into 2023. Have an amazing time, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you want to subscribe, click the link right over there that says subscribe. And if you want to book a breakthrough session with me, which you absolutely should do, then click the link right over here that says book a call to schedule an appointment to speak with us. I'll see you on the next episode.